It is 1774, and war is on colonial America's doorstep. Despite being torn by loyalties, the colonists are rushing towards a revolution. The brewing discontent in the colonies had erupted in the Boston Massacre, and after the escapades of the Boston Tea Party, there was no going back for the colonies. On September 5, 1774, 65 representatives met in Philadelphia. This meeting became known as the Continental Congress. It is the earliest form of American democracy. Among them are John Adams, James Madison, and George Washington. They decide that any British attack on any colony will be seen as an act of war. The Continental Congress formed kind of as an outgrowth of what the colonists believed was British oppression. You know, we had had, uh, we had had what I guess are more officially known as the Intolerable Acts that had been, uh, that had been, been passed. And uh, really, it was formed out of an idea that we've got to be able to negotiate it, 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 with the Crown. It wasn't formed out of an idea of, hey, we've got to break away and be independent. It, it, it really started more so as an idea of, can we, can we figure out a way to air our grievances and come to some type of uh, negotiation here? While some colonists sought negotiations, others advocated rebellion. Throughout the war, and even well after the war, the colonists were divided into one group that wanted independence and another group that um, wanted to remain loyal to Britain. And I guess I would say there's a third group, too, that r really could have gone either way. So, um, yeah, some of them clearly had given up trying to compromise. Across the colonies, citizens began arming themselves. They were not trained soldiers, but normal people, farmers, shopkeepers, and blacksmiths. Men, who had never received military training, were now charged with defending their cities from attack. But compared to the highly trained professionals comprising England's army, these ragtag soldiers don't look like they stand a chance. The British had a long established military tradition. They had factories in Britain whose job it was to manufacture guns and arms. They had well trained soldiers and they also hired um, soldiers from other countries such as the Hessians from, from Prussia. So uh, compare that to the colonists who had really, you know, what we know today as a militia. They were local people who, in some cases, a few of them had had military training. They'd served in the British Army, uh, but most of whom were, you know, business people, farmers, things like that. So it's pretty easy to, you know, uh, stack, stack things up that way. The colonists didn't look like they had much of a chance on paper. In spring of 1775, the first battles were fought at Lexington and Concord. On April 19th, 900 Redcoats marched to Lexington. They were ordered to arrest rebel leaders and seize weapons, but they did not anticipate rebel scouts. Accompanied by William Dawes, Paul Revere sets out to alert the city's militia leaders, rousing them to battle. Dawes covers the southern land route across the Boston Neck over the bridge to Lexington. Revere takes a rowboat across the Charles River. He safely lands in Charleston and joins Dawes. There, the two alert almost every house. By 5 a.m., 60 militiamen are up and preparing for war. These barely trained farmers would soon face hundreds of experienced British soldiers. At first, battle seems to be at a standstill. Though the rebels are clearly outmatched, neither side makes a move. But suddenly, a shot rings out. No one knows who fired that first fateful shot, but it commenced a swift battle. In the ensuing clash, the difference between the sides becomes apparent. The Redcoats fire in orderly lines and at a much faster rate than the Minutemen. The British then charge with bayonets. The rest of the Minutemen scattered into the woods. The British killed many Minutemen and wounded many more in the Battle of Lexington. The British then marched to Concord, confident of another victory, but waiting on more than 1,000 rebel militia. Despite their experience, the British are overtaken by sheer numbers. Patriots seize the advantage, and this time, the Redcoats make a hasty retreat. Afterwards, representatives meet again in Philadelphia for a second Continental Congress. 
By this time, the war has been raging for more than a year. By that time, um, it's hard to say who exactly had the advantage militarily. I mean, if you add up all the battles in the war, um, the British may have actually won more battles, if you're keeping count of it that way. But in terms of the key battles that were won, they, they were won by the, the um, colonists. So uh, by the time of the Second Continental Congress, the colonists had won enough significant battles that um, more and more people who lived on this side of the ocean were on their side. The British were getting discouraged because they were fighting so far from home. And so emotionally, psychologically, the tide may have begun to shift a little bit. I'm not quite sure exactly about the years and so forth. It may have happened a little bit earlier or later than the Continental Congress, but the longer the war went on, the more it uh, ground the British down psychologically. Unlike the haphazard Boston Massacre, Lexington and Concord proved to be legitimate warfare with Britain. To face the advancing English army, the men agreed to set up the Continental Army. George Washington of Virginia was commissioned as acting commander. Certainly during the Continental Congress, there was no abandonment of, uh, of the possibility of a peaceful settlement um, with, with England. There was no abandonment of uh, the idea that we would still be colonists. You know, the, really the, um, the process of, of becoming revolutionaries really happened rather rather slowly and over time and, and was an accumulation of uh, the result of different events that took place. Um, likewise, the development of the Continental Army was, was something that, that uh, slowly developed over time. Um, it was one of the key purposes of the Second Continental Co Congress. They realized that we definitely needed to, uh, to create some type of a unified uh, army. To begin drafting the Declaration, Congress set up a Committee of Five. It comprised of Benjamin Franklin, Robert R. Livingston, Roger Sherman, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. Though the committee leaned towards Adams writing the draft, he convinced them Jefferson was the man for the job. Congress spends two days editing Jefferson's finished drafts. On July 4, 1776, Congress approves a wording and sends a declaration for publication. Independence has been officially adopted. Though doing so, they knew they risked death. The people who signed the declaration, um, if you take the time to look at what happened to them afterwards, of course we won the war, so we kind of got away with it in that regard, but um, during the time the war was still going on, Several of the, the signers of the Declaration were captured, punished, um, uh, so they, they knew that they were putting their lives on the line. I mean, basically, in uh, most government situations, the, the penalty for treason, which is what these people were committing, they were committing treason by signing this document, um, it's the death penalty. So they were willing to risk an awful lot. Bunker Hill is the next major battle. It actually takes place in and around Breed's Hill, which is located in Charleston section of Boston. But the battle is named after the nearby Bunker Hill. It takes place on January 17, 1775. The area surrounding contains many strategic hills, which both, party, both patriots and redcoats vie for. The rebels could use these hills to bombard Boston with artillery fire, which was then occupied by the British. Under General Gage, the British planned to send reinforcement to the hills, but after receiving words of these plans, General Prescott takes 1,200 men to fortify Breed's Hill. When the British finally arrive at 3 p.m., they are met with a six-foot-high dirt wall. They first attempt to attack the rebels' left flank. They charge up the hill, four men deep and hundreds across. They expect to easily overtake the Patriots, but despite their greater numbers, the colonists have the advantage of height and fortification. It seems the colonists will claim this as a victory until their ammunition runs out. Realizing this, the Redcoats storm back up the hill. With rebel weapons, British guns are equipped with bayonets. 
Victory. This time, the Patriots are forced the to retreat. Were very heavily stacked against them. They, they were fighting against what was regarded as the greatest armed force in the world, and yet they held their own in that battle. And that proved to a lot of um, colonists that they did stand a chance in their uh, armed revolution. British losses are great, though. Securing the hill does not compensate for the many lives lost, many which are officers. And now it is clear to the colonies the British are not invincible. The next significant battle takes place at Trenton, New Jersey. On Christmas Eve, Washington leads his men across the Delaware River. The plan is to overtake the Hessian stronghold in Trenton. The Hessians are German soldiers hired by the English. Washington and his men face blistering wind and freezing temperatures as they cross the river. They land at 3 a.m., four hours behind schedule. Soon, they surround the fort. Trenton was a small settlement, and like many colonial towns, it lacked city walls. The Hessian officer, Johann Rahl, ignored advice to make fortifications. This would prove to be a disastrous mistake. Washington orders troops to block the Hessian escape route. Under fire from all sides, the Hessians cannot organize. Nay. Their resistance collapses. It is a decisive victory for the colonists. Victories like Saratoga empowered the revolution. These battles proved the once ragtag militia had transformed into a legitimate threat to England. They would not stand until they were dead or free, though after these early battles, the Patriots still had a long trek to liberty.